The 84-year-old Kansas City man charged with shooting a 16-year-old teen has been released on a $200,000 bond. Andrew Lester was released from custody. He was charged with felony assault and armed criminal action. According to court documents, Lester told investigators he had just gone to bed when he heard the doorbell and picked up his gun. He says he saw a black male pulling on the storm door handle. He says he pulled the trigger because he was scared to death of the teen's size. Lester claims that no words were exchanged, but Ralph Yarl told police that he never touched the door. He says he was immediately shot in the head and fell to the ground and then was shot in the arm. Like Ralph is going to be alive to see justice, which is so important because a lot of moms are fighting for justice after they don't have their kid anymore. Family members say Ralph is able to talk and is expected to make a full recovery. The House of Representatives set to vote on a GOP-led resolution to block a Washington, D.C. policing bill that is aimed at accountability and reform. This comes shortly after similar measures sparked tension and division among Democrats. In March, President Biden said that he would not veto a different resolution to rescind a D.C. crime law. This time, the White House issuing a veto threat ahead of the House vote on blocking the policing bill. Republican supporters of the new resolution call the D.C. Policing Act an anti-police law. They say it would weaken law enforcement's power to respond to crimes. Democrats have long argued Cong Congress should not be interfering with the D.C. city government, and they have defended reforms outlined in that bill. All eyes on the Supreme Court as it decides on a blockbuster medical abortion case. The court is expected to hand down an order on whether to let lower court rulings stand. That would restrict access to mifepristone, a drug used to terminate pregnancies. The case challenging the Food and Drug Administration's approach to regulating the drug. The Supreme Court's decision not only determines the access abortion seekers have to the medication, but it also raises questions about what kind of authority the FDA has to determine a drug's safety and appropriate rules of use. Strep infections in the U.S. surged this winter, especially among children. Infections were up nearly 30 percent from their pre-pandemic peak. That is according to the Epic Health Research Network. It also says preliminary data from early March shows a continued upward trend. The findings are based on electronic health records from thousands of clinics and hospitals. Methodist Healthcare is home to the largest multi-specialty robotic surgery program in the United States. They perform heart surgery without having to open the heart, but by magnifying the issue times 10 and using robotic arms to conduct the procedure. Max Massey gives us an inside look at Methodist Texan's system that is helping San Antonio and inspiring local students. This is the camera that goes inside. Then you have right arm, left arm, and you have an extra arm that can help expose for you. Meet Dr. Renata Ford, a robotic heart surgeon. You pinch like this and then you can actually move. So you can do things like pass instrument from one side to the other. Dr. Ford is walking us through how when you look through this lens, you're essentially authorized to perform surgery with these robotic arms. It allows a minimally invasive approach to surgery, allowing for faster recovery times, sending patients home same day, if not the very next day. The director of surgical services tells us robots like these, they're being used to perform complex surgeries all around the country. And they can be a huge benefit. Helps with surgeon fatigue. Instead of a surgeon holding those instruments, you know, for hours on end trying to perform a surgery, they can, uh, the robot will hold the instruments for them. Transferring a VR movement into the tip of the robot and the acuity, you see 10 times more uh, with the camera. So it's much more precise. So not only are these robots being used now for things like heart surgeries, but they're also influencing and inspiring the youth here in San Antonio. Very refreshing to see them excited about it, excited about the technology, and also not thinking, man, we're going to have to op open somebody's chest to fix their heart. Health Careers High School students were invited to explore the Da Vinci device. And Dr. Ford says these robots, they actually might spark the next generation of medical leaders. The newer generations, I think, they get a lot of very excited with the technologies. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Taking a live look outside with live cam. Lots of clouds out there today. Uh, temperatures uh, not really reflecting what we want to see, which would be dry, cool air.
It's actually really muggy out there. Uh, that's that's a big ask for late April, though, Ursula. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, uh, temperatures are going to warm up into the 80s today. We could get some cooler weather by Saturday, so there is that. We've had a couple cold fronts that have. We can, we can, we can. We're going to keep our fingers crossed anyway. I uh, want to show you a picture here on our KSA Connect. Uh, that is a chrysalis. The monarch caterpillar produces the chrysalis, of course, comes out as a monarch butterfly. Always cool to see this this time of year, and that's a really cool shot. Uh, we appreciate that. Of course, Sarah Costa, if you remember last year, she uh, tracked this, the, the timeline of all this, uh, which is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, we love to see the monarch butterflies around here. As we look at the live radar, not much going on at the moment. In fact, things are pretty quiet. We're going to be keeping our eyes out west this afternoon. Threat of some strong storms. Isolated. Not a huge risk, but it is there. Hail would be the main threat if we do get some strong storms going later today. And here's a look at the KSAT 12-hour forecast. 83 o'clock, 82, 5 p.m. We do add in some small rain chances there, mainly west of I-35. And then clouds fill back in tonight. And uh, we'll have a little better opportunity at some rain tomorrow. Of course, Fiesta gets underway. If you're curious about your Fiesta forecast, uh, we just put, sent out a push alert via the KSAT app, KSAT weather app, with some details on some of the events and what you can expect weather-wise if you want to check that out. We'll, of course, have more on the rest of your forecast, too, coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Now to that historic settlement on that $1.6 billion defamation case against Fox News. The 11th hour deal coming just as that trial is getting set to get underway between Fox and Dominion voting systems. ABC's Morgan Norwood on the settlement and what's next for Fox. Fox News will pay $787 million to Dominion Voting Systems in a settlement that just narrowly avoided a trial in the voting machine company's lawsuit that would have further exposed how the news network spread lies about Dominion and the 2020 presidential election that Dominion says it knew were false. The truth matters. Lies have consequences. Fox admitted no wrongdoing, but said in a statement, we acknowledge the court's rulings, finding certain claims about Dominion to be false. Fox News did apologize. We got them to be held accountable, and we got them to pay us a historic settlement amount. $787 million is short of the $1.6 billion that Dominion had asked for, but it is the largest settlement of its kind. All of this after watching Fox News hosts and guests repeatedly make false claims about its voting machines being rigged to favor Joe Biden over Donald Trump. Fox News host Laura Ingram and others now won't have to testify. I would love to have questioned the Fox hosts on the stand, but I think that as we've all seen over the last several months, the truth about Fox has come out and we feel very vindicated with the result that we got at summary judgment and the result that we got today. The judge had already decided what Fox News aired was clearly false and damaging. What the jury would have had to decide was whether Fox recklessly disregarded the truth. All eyes now on Fox News Channel and how it moves forward. It's a uh, big step forward in democracy if we can, um, uh, our system can send a signal that if media companies lie, uh, whoever they are, on, where, on whatever channel it is, and they do so knowingly, um, they will be prepared to pay a very, very high price. And look, Dominion is not done yet. There are separate lawsuits against Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, and Mike Lindell. They're also going after conservative media outlets Newsmax and One America News Network. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. A pair of moms using gently used clothing to make money. How they've been able to grow their business and the advice they have for folks looking to start their own businesses. A driver delivering a pizza with a side of justice. How he was able to multitask, helping police while dropping off the pie. A pizza delivery driver in Pennsylvania delivered more than just a pie recently. He is getting the hero treatment for what he did to a suspect who was running from police. CNN's Jeannie Moe shows us how he put his best foot forward. Imagine answering your door. That's a high speed chase. And getting a police chase with your pizza. Oh my God, Jaeger. Oh my God, Jaeger. There's a high speed chase on my But it's what the pizza delivery guy did that inspired awe, and he didn't even drop the pizza. Brookhaven, Pennsylvania Police. Oh, 
were chasing a suspected stolen vehicle when it went out of control, the pizza delivery guy took control by tripping one of two fleeing suspects, a 17-year-old juvenile. Tyler Morrell from Coco's Pizza decided to put his foot right. down. I was like, I can't do anything with my hands because I'm holding the pizza, so I just stuck my leg out. Tyler got a bruise out of it, but he's been peppered, make that pepperoni with praise. I deliver pizza and bad guys. Yeah, I'm pretty sick of seeing like crime like that go on. I was just ready to step up, and if they needed a hand, I was, I was there, or a foot, whatever. <laughs> so. The suspect got the Karate Kid treatment. Sweep the leg. No mercy. Johnny, no! This wasn't the first time bystanders have given cops a leg up. Good, good. A veteran with a bad back and a cane casually tripped an armed suspect being chased by police in Ohio. My leg made the choice for me. Brookhaven police thank the pizza guy. If you're interested in a job, we're always looking for good people. Those who ordered the pizza gave a rave review. 10 out of 10 delivery. Tyler didn't just deliver takeout pizza, he delivered a takeout. Genie Moose, CNN, New York. But did he get a tip? I a guy should have got a good he, one. A really good one. From the police yeah. and from the people yes. with the, I mean, he didn't drop like That was a priceless. Yeah. Crime I, fighting pizza delivery man. You got to like quadruple the tip. Oh, yeah. At least. At least. That was incredible. Good stuff. Hey, we go outside for you. We've got uh, still mostly cloudy skies here. 75 degrees right now. The low this morning, 69. That was it. That's how humid it was. 81 and 59 are the averages. 101 and 42 are the records. So still widespread temperatures this time of year. We'll be somewhere in the middle, uh, but warm next couple days with highs in the 80s and some chances for rain. We'll look more at that coming up in just a few minutes. All right, we are excited about Fiesta. We have Fiesta Fiesta tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. a little nervous. Oh, do I need to bring no. a raincoat, an umbrella, put on my wellies? What yeah. do I need to do? Uh, well, it's not going to be a washout, but I okay. will say this: we do need to be prepared for a storm or two. So let's go ahead and grab the umbrella just in case. Let's have the case that weather app on standby in case we need to pass along an alert. It's possible. It's possible. We do have some. Uh, isolated showers and storms in the forecast for tomorrow. Right now, it's just mostly cloudy. We've got 75 at the airport. Uh, dew point is at 67, and that is why it is so very humid. With south southeast Julie winds at 16, that, that continue to bring in a ton of moisture. The sky cover, a lot of it. We've got a lot of clouds working uh, working through the area, uh, and that's why we've got the mostly cloudy skies. There are some breaks here and there. You're going to see some sun this afternoon, just not a whole lot. And uh, temperatures: 79 Hondo, 70 in Kerrville. That's one of the cool spots. 79 Gonzales. Uh, we've made it into the 80s in Del Rio, and we're close to it in Catula, 79 there. Still some 60s in places like Comfort, Kerrville, Bandera, underneath thick clouds, higher elevation there. But you'll even uh, make it into the mid-70s today. And I think here around San Antonio, you're going to see some 80s here uh, next few hours. Let's talk dew points. So they're very high right now. They do drop off some on Saturday. Now, if you remember, we were talking to you yesterday, and the drop-off was huge. We had a lot of dry air moving in. It was going to be a lot cooler doesn't look that way anymore. The front comes through, but then comes right back to the north and the moisture surges back in by Saturday afternoon. So that kind of changes the scenario a little bit here. And that brings rain chances back into play on Sunday. We'll talk about that in just a second. So it does cool down on Saturday, but not as much as we once thought it would. Here's the setup. We've got an area of low pressure up across the Dakotas. Cold front trails back into far north Texas at this point. And this sinks slowly south. It'll be here by Friday. And out ahead of that, we'll get some isolated showers and storms again, I think, tomorrow. A lot of clouds right now, but here's a look at the forecast for later today. Notice we've got one lone storm, or at least that's what this computer model thinks. I do believe we can get some isolated activity out here around Del Rio and Eagle Pass later this evening. And if it does develop, there's a good chance it would be strong to severe. So we've got to watch that. We'll put in a 20% chance. Uh, I don't think this works towards San Antonio. It probably goes south and east and dissipates as we get into the overnight hours. Tomorrow morning, clouds come back. So too does the drizzle, so we can see some light drizzle tomorrow morning. And then by the afternoon, notice this uh, model shows 
isolated showers and storms. About a 30% chance developing by the early afternoon. Then as we get into the evening hours, still some storms around, and this is where we could be looking at a couple of strong storms. So that's why we have to keep a close eye on things. There is a risk for that and uh, about a 40% chance of storms what we're going to put in the forecast now. And that continues into late Thursday night, early, early Friday morning. So this is midnight Friday. We could see a broken line of storms come through. And then once that passes by, then things quiet down. We get our front eventually during the day on Friday. And that really does clear things out. And we get uh, lots of sun by Friday afternoon and some drier air briefly, briefly as we showed you, uh, because that moisture tries to come back in on Saturday. So the risk for severe weather today is going to be out west. It's isolated low end, but it is there. Thursday, they've actually brought the risk, the scattered risk, a little bit further south, right there to Bear County. So that's kind of a change. This is an update that just happened within a half hour, this half hour. Storm Prediction Center bringing that a little bit further south, and I agree with that. So there is that risk for a strong storm coming up tomorrow for the entire area, and then that very quickly shifts east and southeast by the time we get into Friday. I really think Friday is probably going to be a quiet day. So here's how it breaks down. 30% chance to 20% chance today, but a 30% chance tomorrow, 40% chance Thursday night. Pretty low chances, if any at all, Friday. And then quiet conditions Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night before rain chances come back on Sunday. Now we think on Sunday too, we'd have to watch for a couple of strong storms. So 82 today, 84 tomorrow, 87 Friday, a little cooler Saturday, 67 Sunday and then some small rain chances to start next week. So when Ursula wears her Fiesta hat for Fiesta Fiesta, she might just want to have one of those plastic covers that cowboys wear on their cowboy hats if it's oh. raining. Oh, yeah. And now you can take it on and put it off. To, well, know, I think I'm case. just going to wear my straw cowboy hat and put some flowers on it. There you How's go. That? that might work. That works too. All right. We'll be right back. Two San Antonio moms on a mission to reduce waste by selling gently used clothing. Tiffany Huerta shares how a big prize is helping their dreams come true. I'm looking for bright colors and we want to make sure all the pieces can mix and match together. After dropping off their kids at school, Nicole Boynton and Kara Livingston begin their day at work. We'll get the size, the climate, and the gender. The two moms operate their business Hand Me Up out of Livingston's garage on the northwest side. It is a curated bag of secondhand kids' clothes. So think a wardrobe, mix and match, three bottoms, three tops, and one kind of bonus item like a dress or something like that. The company offers clothing sizes newborn up to age six. For the family that wants to choose secondhand, we want to make this as easy as like click and shop on Amazon. They started this business about two years ago and they've sold over 3,500 items. As of now, we have served 40 states. And they are not slowing down. They recently participated in the 2023 Community Fund. It's a competition hosted by Geekdom, a collaborative working space downtown. It's kind of like Shark Tank. Like we, we went in, we pitched, and um, they asked questions. This year, Hand Me Up won and took home $25,000. They are excited for this next chapter, and they have a message for anyone wanting to start their own business. Just do it. Just if you if you have some more coming up on I say live. <laughs> 